Hello. More talk about cross compilers, our favourite subject. So, um, it's quite a lot in here. Now, um, the basic point is uh, that we don't have cross compilers in the Debian archive itself, and we should fix that. Um, but I think it's actually useful, uh, unless you're all serious experts already, to go over a little bit about the whole cross build environment which we've developed over the last couple of years, just so you know what the hell we're talking about and how this is supposed to work. So, uh, as ever, the first thing we have to do is explain what build, host, and target mean, because when talking about cross compilers, it's very important that when you say host, you mean uh, the thing it's going to be run on, uh, not the machine you're building on now, that's build, uh, and so on. And uh, target is the code you are generating for. Um, or code you manipulate. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Uh, so, um, a normal compiler has all three of these things the same. Life is very simple. Uh, a standard cross compiler, you build it on one machine um, and you run it on that same machine, but you target something else. Um, and you can, of course, cross build a normal compiler, uh, in which case the build machine is different from the host and target. Uh, and we do actually do that when you bootstrap a new architecture. In order to get a compiler for the new architecture, the first thing you have to do is cross-build it. <laughs> Bigger fonts, OK. Uh, uh, Control-Shift-Plus doesn't work. Great. <laughs> oh, wow. Didn't want to pick a font. Is that good? Is that about right? Thank you. Okay. Um, so, one of the conventions which has existed for a long time, basically because of autoconf, is that if you want to run something which acts on uh, the target, so something different according to what code you're about to generate, um, you prefix your command with triplet. So. Triplet to GCC, so ARM, Linux, GNU ABI, GCC generates code for ARM, Linux, GNU ABI, as opposed to just GCC, which is assumed to actually mean build architecture dash GCC. And in fact, that now works everywhere in Debian and has done for um, quite a long time. So you can always do wherever you could do triplet GCC. If the triplet is the build architecture native one, it still works. So this is nice and orthogonal now. Um, so all you have to do to make everything work is to make sure that when you configured things, or when you use commands, those commands with the prefix are issued at the right time, and the right program gets run. Um, this is the multi-arch syntax for specifying the architecture something is installed on. Sorry, was the, uh, so, yeah. uh, you mentioned GIR scanner there. Is that has somebody actually done that? Or no, is that uh, it's merely an example of something <laughs> right. a little bit further up the stack, which is the next thing you hit. Damn, that you has got me so hopeful. No. <laughs> so this is another thing that has architecture-specific behavior. And right now, we can't cross-build anything with GIR scanner in it properly because we need a cross-GIR scanner, and nobody has written one. Cause it's, those uh, so I have, I have looked at it, but not uh, written code for it. It uh, looks like the first step is probably to convert all of the... Uh, all of the stuff in it that has uh, uh, detected type sizes into the uh, really rather alarming autoconf macros for uh, for doing this. Um, but uh, if you if you haven't seen it, uh, autoconf has a has a thing for detecting the uh, word size and endianness and uh, sizes of arbitrary C types and that sort of thing for the machine you're building for. Um, by an incredibly scary piece of M4 that goes off and bisects it by repeated compiler failures. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, a marvelous piece of code that you should look at. So, yeah, so the GIR thing is, is that's Gobjet introspection for everyone who hasn't come across it. And the whole of the GNOME stuff all now uses a lot of that to define its uh, a interfaces as well as its documentation. So it's actually, at the moment, we you can build quite a lot of stuff by just not doing that, and mm -hmm. it still works, but that really isn't going to last very long anymore. It's probably broken already. Uh, so for cross-building further up the stack than a base system, once you want GTK, you need that, and nobody's done it yet. Um, uh, sorry, just as a point of information, the package names are the other way around uh, for uh, historical yes, reasons, sorry, I guess. So gcc dash triplet. Um, yeah, I don't know, indeed. Which is annoying, isn't it? Um, 
And but I think package config is an extra hyphen in this. Uh, so it's supposed to be concepts rather than details. Yeah, I shall go and edit it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's gobby. Go and just fix it. Um, so yes, you all understand the multi-arch syntax. Uh, could we use that? So we now have indie package, which is already in stable. The uh, de build depends qualifiers colon any colon native and colon specific architecture, which allow you to depend on things. So basically, so that in general, if you depend on if it's something just. Uh, without specifying anything in particular, then you want the same architecture as I'm in now. Uh, well, and the multi-arch stuff will magically go, ah, it's a library um, which is multi-arch same, therefore when you depend on it uh, and specify that you're building for a particular architecture, it will go off and get the libraries for that architecture. And that all just works. Uh, colon any and colon native let you specify the exceptions where um, you're asking for a something library and building for ARM uh, but actually, you wanted the native architecture version of that library because it's something to do with the build and not something to do with the code you're going to run on the other machine. Um, and we have the ability to depend on specific packages and other architecture, but in practice, you can't use that because it doesn't work on buildies yet. Previous discussion. Uh, uh, so we need to experiment with that and find out whether anything really, really bad happens if you enable that. Um, it should work through. So yes, that's right. But the point is that we got it into stable in time so that we can use it, um, which is good. Um, so you can now just do app get build dep dash a target architecture package, and it will go off and get all the things you need to build on this machine and all the libraries you need to build for the other machine. Uh, and this is actually very nice indeed. It just works. Um, the thing you can't do yet is... Uh, use build profiles from apt um, without some patches, um, mostly because we failed to agree the build profile syntax in time for the last release, because um, we had a nice thing with angle brackets that was very simple, um, but uh, didn't pass muster in Debian Devel. We have a new proposal, which was mentioned yesterday, uh, and we expect to actually implement that any second now. Uh, but this is very cool. It means you can do a build um, specifying a build profile, which basically is necessary for bootstrapping to say just um, you know, the first time you build libc, you haven't got libse Linux yet or libaudit, both of which are now needed, and you have to have a way of saying, please build without that. Well, if you want to automate this stuff rather than do it all by hand. So I noticed there that in your your, your example, you, you're showing a build profile equals and stage one come across. And I had argued um, throughout the discussion that we don't actually have a, a use case for more more than one build profile, and that uh, the the only build profile we actually cared about was the the breaking uh, circular dependencies, which basically only call it required a stage one. So I wondered if you could. Me and Docker both think there should be it should be split into purpose. Because so I was going to ask for an example and uh, uh, of of why you need a cross build profile here and and what that was legitimately used for. We'll get to one later, but well, maybe not a cross build profile, but uh, something like a test profile. Um, so we, we did want to differentiate between uh, build dependencies which are only needed uh, for, for testing things or for build dependencies which are only needed for cross-compiling and things like that. So you're right. You can just do it with one thing. But once you start doing a bit of this, it becomes clear that you go, well, uh, this bootstrap uh, means I need to change this dependency. And if I was crossing, I would need to change this dependency. It's not actually the same thing. They often go together, and you could just decree that. But I don't think we lose anything by being able to. We, we lose some of the simplicity, and it introduces confusion. It makes it harder for maintainers to understand what's going on. Um, and I think my brain rat holed five levels deep from that comment from Doko. So I think we should probably postpone that discussion till the end. So yes, uh, <laughs> the spec allows us to do more than one, but we don't have to. Um, what else have we got? So cross-compilers, uh, so what we currently have, so for a long time mdebian.org has been building a pile of cross-compilers uh, for most, if not all, Debian architectures, except when some of them are broken, um, which is quite often. Uh, it got to the start, back a couple of years ago, they were all broken, uh, and Al Viro turned up one day saying, I need to fix, uh, I need to build something, and your cross-compilers are knackered. 
and he fixed it. Uh, I think it was the MIPS has three uh, multi-libs, and that was all wrong. And then he fixed all the others too, so the man's a genius. I was very impressed. Um, so that works to an extent, but it suffers a bit from tending to be out of sync with Debian. So right now, if you try it today, uh, last time I looked before I went on holiday, it was out of date, and so it wouldn't install. Um, the cross com common cross-compilers are in Ubuntu and have been for a while, so ArmHF, ArmEL, and now ARM64. Uh, sorry? And PowerPC, okay. All from AMD64 and from i386? Yes. Um, so later on we get to discuss the matrix of cross-compilers we can actually be bothered to maintain. You know, there's an enormous number of possible combinations and most of them are a bit useless. Um, so the other part of this that makes it work is uh, a magic package called Cross Build Essential, um, which does the same job as Build Essential to just say if you're cross-building you always need these core things. So uh, a C cross-compiler, a C++ cross-compiler, cross-package config, uh, and a C library for the, or libc dev for the uh, host architecture. For the host architecture, not just project architecture, specific cross build essential packages, then microphone uh, Is there one cross build essential package for every target then? Yes. So you just install cross build essential arm HF, installs the right stuff. And better than that, S build already knows that. Uh, if you ask to cross-build something in S-Build, it should install cross-build essential thing. Uh, and so you just get all the right crap pulled in and it just works. It's very nice. And we have an S-Build profile for that. An S-Build profile? profile? Oh. Um, no? Uh, it doesn't need it. Oh, well. Uh, he was asking whether we have an S-Build profile for that. Right. We, we don't need it because uh, S-Build has a step where it installs all of the build essential stuff anyway. So. It, can ju it just installs cross-build essential, whatever, at that point. So S-Build has the internal knowledge of what it's targeting. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So well, you, it's, you, it's told no. what it's targeting, and it knows that build not equal host means it needs cross-build essential. You, you do, do S-Build dash dash host arch, and... Right, sorry, I was, I was meaning to just say that there's very good iteration with S-Build here such that um, S-Build knows about cross-build essential and wraps everything for you. Yes. Um, and such that... that uh, so it already knew about Build Essential, right? And we just told yes. it about Cross Build Essential as well. Yep. Um, now, of course, the LLVM people want some different packages for Cross Build Essential, so uh, we might have to have a think. Maybe we just want LLVM Cross Build Essential. That would work. Uh, and it's, that is actually defined in the sbuild.rc file, so uh, it's not hard-coded. So, in fact... For lo at the moment, there isn't a cross-build essential package in Debian because it hasn't got any cross-compilers to depend on, so it's a bit useless. Um, but you can still specify that you want libc, colon, blah, and some things if you have got them. That, that those packages do exist in my bootstrap repo if you want to have a play. So this is actually all very nice and basically works beautifully, um, except in a few cases where it doesn't, which we'll get to later. Um, these cross compilers have been built in different ways over time. So MDebian has used a tool called BuildCross, which has been an experimental for a long time. Actually, I tried using it recently. It works very well. Um, so that basically just goes through the process of all the steps you need to do to build a cross compiler using dpackage cross, downloading the libc from the other architecture, blah, 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 uh, and can do arbitrary combinations of, it'll do a whole set. So you say build from these things to all these things, get on with it. And if you're really lucky, it'll build all of them and not fail halfway through. Uh, so uh, we did try building an IA64, an ARM to IA64 cross-compiler a couple of weeks ago because somebody wanted one, and it almost worked. <laughs> um, meanwhile, in Ubuntu, um, uh, a couple of years ago, Martian did some fine work to produce a cross-toolchain. So there's a package called Toolchain Base Architecture, um, which uses the Linux source, binutil source, GCC source, and easy libc source to go through the whole process of uh, build the Linux libc headers, build uh, GCC stage one, build eg libc stage one, build GCC stage two, build eg libc stage two, build GCC stage three, i.e. the one you actually wanted, oh, and binutils at the beginning of all that, uh, and the GCC default stuff. Uh, is that in there? Was that another package, I think, now? Yeah, 
So that's nifty. The, the, the th nice thing about that is that that works on existing build -E infrastructure because it only depends on binary source packages. So all of these things produce a source package. So you know, ideally, you would just use the GCC source and build it in a slightly different way with the profile, for example. Um, but you can't do that at the moment, so that's why it's done like that. Um, da -ba -da -ba -dum. Well, so yeah, you get all those packages out of it. So it uses the dpackage cross thing to generate a C library and a libgcc for the host architecture. Uh, target architecture, I don't know. Um, uh, but installed as a binary package for the build architecture. So you're not actually using the one uh, you're not using the multi-arch location for that library. It's got its own copy, um, which is OK, except when it goes wrong. Um, and you end up with two copies of libc on your system, and just occasionally, things link against the wrong one. That shouldn't happen, but I've seen a few cases of that. Um, so uh, you can build the cross toolchain in a slightly different way um, without going through the whole bootstrap process and just building <coughs> GCC against the libc and libgcc for the host architecture. Um, that, that now works nicely. That was a GSOC project last year by Tibalt Gurkha and Docker has integrated all that. So there's this magic variable with depth on target, packages equals yes. And if you set that, you just build GCC against the stuff you already got. But that needs, that's a multi-arch build. So the build of the compiler is now depending on the C, C library and the GCC from the other architecture. So we can't do that in the archive until we've enabled it. And the question, one of the questions for today is, do we wait and do it that way, or do we just do what Ubuntu is doing now because we could upload it tomorrow? Um, and the main reason why I worry about that is the transition, for whether, whether we make lives difficult for ourselves if we're going to move from one to the other. And Docker doesn't like this plan much, but I do. And we've been having this argument for some time. Uh, sure, whatever. Um, one of the one of the reasons I'd like something sooner rather than later is that I've been running, uh, well, kind of falls over a lot, but uh, I've been running a cross-builder, uh, not a cross-builder for Ubuntu men for some time. Um, and, you know, it's uh, about a third of the packages just build. Um, and I would very much love to see what state all of Debian is in. Uh, I can't really do that until we've... Uh, got cross compilers in the archive um, and I'd like to have that in place uh, the sooner the better so that we can start distributing the work of uh, uh, actually fixing packages rather better than we currently do yep it's true so the plan was in fact always to upload we agreed at the MDebian sprint in February two years ago that we'd upload those packages forthwith um, but for whatever reason it never happened um, um, and it made a lot more sense then than it did now. But you're right. We should probably just do that. Uh, I just worry about what happened if we do that, and then if we try to transition to uh, cross dependencies, is it? Do we have a problem with a lot of replaces and conflicts and things, or does it all just come out in the wash and it's easy? I'm not sure. Are those are those cross build dependencies or cross runtime it's, dependencies? It, that we're talking your binary about? packages would be coming from different source packages, probably potentially. Uh, so you'd have a lot of you know it's, it's when you take over a binary package from one source package to another. That's okay. Yeah, that's trivial. Right. Okay. Good. So, the current way to build a cross compiler can um, be simplified. So um, I think it's um, exaggerated to to speak about a seven step. Yes. Um, so if somebody wants to work on the, on that, um, please contact me. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I so would like to see some simplification there, uh, but don't want to spend the time myself uh, at the moment. I mean, it's trivial to take out the bin utils parts and put that. So I get to that in a minute of what I think might be a sensible plan. Right. Um, and so so one design decision for the um, cross compilers was to have them stand alone, and and. Um, well, as it's currently done in Ubuntu, we are able to upload the um, cross-compilers to the archive and use them um, for cross-building. And um, I do not want to rely on, on, on foreign architectures um, to do that. So 
except that if you're multi-arch cross-building, you'd do anyway, because you have to have a matching libgcc everywhere. So you've already um, version synced your... Um, but in this case, I already um, have to have this architecture available. And that's not the case when I'm bootstrapping. No. So I agree. Bootstrapping, you'd have to do something different. Um, also, there's, a, there's always the risk that if things ever go slightly out of sync, you end up in the case where you have to re-bootstrap. That's the other consideration. And so bootstrapping, m your cross-compiler right, may you not be a one-time operation. Too far out of sync. I mean, obviously, that we have the packaging to do both of these things, right? So at the moment, it's completely trivial. It's setting a variable which way you build. And yeah, I think it's important that we keep that functionality. It's just a question of what the default build is, uh, whether you do all of it every time or just... Okay, we should probably uh, we'll carry this conversation on. I'll see how far we get through this, and we'll come back to arguing about that. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, bin utils is nice and standalone and simple. Uh, you just have a bin utils cross source package that just builds for all the architectures we're supporting. Does that seem sensible? Uh, you should probably leave Docker with a microphone. I think he's going to have to answer all these questions. Um, if we split the bin utils part out of toolchain base, we just have. Um, thing so that builds, just cycles through each architecture we're supporting and builds a bin utils foo. So, well, the current pack packaging, um, so, so we, we only built the glibc um, uh, parts and, and the kernel headers out of the base toolchain package. Um, and um, Okay, bin utils is already separate. Yes, right. and GCC Sorry. is uh, also separate. Um, so, so what I was doing was uh, to um, um, just, well, to, to limit the bootstrap part um, um, into the glibc packages. Right. So um, I, I built a throwaway compiler just to build glibc, and then I don't have to care about interdependencies for, for GCC anymore. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so and there's another... Package config, so pa cross package config actually consists of nothing but a link. So the actual package config package contains um, package config cross wrapper, which basically sets a path and then runs package config. Um, so it's a, it, each cross package config thing is a rather trivial package, uh, and they could all be made out of package config for each architecture, or you can make one for each of them out of the, um, the toolchain base thing, which is what happens at the moment. Doesn't really matter much. I'm not sure if anyone cares. Um, I spent a long time deciding that I couldn't decide which way was better. Well, so, so if you're arguing that you would have have the the bit made out of the package config package for each architecture, mm. you mean you would still have to build it as a separate binary package then? Because yeah, I think so. Because well, you don't have to. Uh, you could have a you could because have a package you don't config cross multi You're not cross installing package config as part of your build system. You're installing the native version of package config, not the cross version. So saying That's right, saying yes. that you would ship. True. ARM Linux GNU ABI package config in the ARM HF version of package config doesn't help you because you've installed the AMD64 version of package config, but not, right. not the cross one. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I, th I thought you were suggesting that the AMD64 version and indeed every other version of package config would include the archi would include symlinks for every architecture we've ever heard of, and then we just make it multi arch foreign. Yeah. It is already multi arch foreign. Uh, right, but then it would actually work as multi arch foreign. So yeah, it's sort of a slight lie. If, if anyone can think of a reason why it's better to do it one way or the other, I, 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 I think it's better to do it the way we've already done it because that way people who want to do their own targets aren't stuck uh, arguing whether their made-up architecture is important enough to include in the package config package and so forth. Yeah, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. It seems a bit of a shame to ship packages which just have symlinks, but it's nice for or stuff. Or a symlink. Or asim link even yeah, <laughs> but it's, it does mean that if you have your own package to do this stuff, then you can um, you're not linked to the package config package lifecycle basically. You can do your own thing on on the side, and then once it's all ready, yeah, get it all in. Uh, that you get that independence. Um, I mean, I'm not sure it's going to change much, mind you. Um, so uh, one of the things that would simplify all this a bit is if we actually had source dependencies, which I saw someone mention on the list. It never occurred to me until someone went, we could have source dependencies. Um, so you know, we have to build, there's a whole load of stuff to build binutil source and build GCC source and build Linux source. And Linux source is annoying because it's not quite the same as the actual Linux package, whereas the others are the same as the package and have the Debian foo in. But 
I'm kind of I'm kind of conflicted about that. It seems like a it, it seems kind of theoretically nice, but you, given that you have access to, given that you always guaranteeably have access to a mirror with source on it as part of the so during a build, why not just the time use when I found it, source? The time when I found it really annoying is doing the new architecture bootstrap. In order to test anything using the build mechanism, you've got to fettle the package so that it rebuilds the source package with the old patch in so that you can do the build oh, with I'm the thing. And I'm not I'm that not drove saying, me crazy. I'm, I'm not saying that the dash source packages are, are a nice way to do things. I'm saying that you can just use apt-get source. Yes. In your build. Yes, that's right. Uh, it it yeah, may okay. not. Well, it, I thought that was so kind it of. May, is it that may not frowned on? It may not actually be configured that way right now, but you ha you are guaranteed to have access to, to a mirror with source on it. You can synthesize one if you need to. Yes. Uh, it is. S build fetches it. There's there's other stuff that could be nice with um, beyond just getting the source. If you could say build depends something dot something call on source, uh, you might be able to pull in transitive build depends then. Well, like for instance, currently, currently, if you do, if you depend, if you build depend on binutil source or GCC source, they also declare dependencies oh, on stuff sure, that they sure, need. Sure. And so, if you just do the app get source stuff, you don't get that. And so, you have to maintain your own set of dependencies. So there. I'd naively assume that you weren't allowed to do app get source in the middle of a build, and that would seem terribly shoddy packaging. But, um, but yeah, that would work just fine, uh, and actually be slightly easier from my point of view. But. Um, Yeah, I mean, okay. So anyway, that's that's what would be nice, or maybe it would be nice. I don't know. Nobody, it, it, it's not holding anything up. Yeah, why not? Microphone, microphone. How much more have we got to do? So now I have to put myself on the view first. So <laughs> the the reason you're not allowed to do that is because you, uh, the build is not guaranteed to be online. So if you Run app get source. You're assuming there's actually networking or a some source repository at, at, at least, um, which is an, an incorrect <laughs> assumption. That's what I thought always. So you're guaranteed to have a mirror because your build dependencies are coming from the mirror. You're also guaranteed to be able to fetch the source for the package that you're building. So that has to come from somewhere. The builder may not be allowed to access an external network. There is no reason in principle that it would need to a access any different network than the one it's pulling its binary build dependencies from. However, I don't think we currently actually have anything in the design which, which requires that the source is available on the mirror that it's pulling the binaries from. Because the source package you're building may not be in the archive yet anyway. It may be pulled from somewhere else, and it may have some special way of actually getting that yeah. into S-Build. Right. Um, right. While, while that's true, uh, for we're not talking about the source of the package you're building. We're talking about something that you might be source depending on, nice. which has got to come from wh which has got to come from the mirror. So I don't see the difference between app get source and a hypothetical future source dependency from that point of view. Okay. Well, I think we'll have to continue uh, this like because uh, there's a number of other items to. I cover. would like to point out that there are plans to enable network namespaces. Uh, on Linux, build these to shut down any network access. So just because there's a mirror available at the time you're fetching the build dependencies and uh, downloading the package doesn't mean you have any network left when you run the build. We're, go we're planning to use this for other things anyway, and there are already packages that use this for other things. Uh, if for instance, Debian installer will be unbuildable if you remove that capability. So I think the project might not like that very much. Okay, right. Um, well, we'll we'll punt that for now then, uh, <laughs> and come back to that. Um, uh, the Mingu man over there would uh, like partial architectures um, uh, for uh, Mingu architectures, so that um, I don't know, Stephen, do you want to mention just what's used and what be useful? Yeah, so this is just in general for partial arches when you're cross-building stuff. Uh, if we can have it as a multi-arch partial arch that's recognized by all the various tools, then we can ship libraries. This is what Steve was saying uh, in the earlier buff. The nice thing about multi-arch is that you can install libraries that you're never going to use on your host system, but that match the target, and your cross-compilers can use them all. And then 
Uh, that way, because of the way autoconf works, there are a lot of packages in Debian that just do the right thing when you cross-compile them, and so then you get for free tons of libraries on your new cross target. So the thing that's missing is that dpackage doesn't actually have a Mingu architecture defined yet, and it probably should, and then all this pretty much just works, right? There's a patch in the BTS. Yeah, so, uh, and yeah, it's the same problem as the arm um, non thing from the previous boff, is other architectures that we're never gonna run, but we'd like to build for. Um, so one of the things to consider is how many cross-compilers do we wish to support, right? Um, so one of the practical problems from doing this for years turns out to be that uh, you know, you've got a lot more things. The more you support, the more likely you are to have one of them not build, at which point you can't upload your package until you disable that one or whatever, which is why Docker wants nothing to do with this, because he just has to worry about the native compilers working. And I think it's quite true. We want to keep the standard GCC native build separate from all the cross compilers, because otherwise there's just way too many ways this will go wrong. Um, so at the moment, we pretty much build AMD64 and i386 to everything. Um, but people are going to want ARM64 to everything soon. Um, why? Because they've got ARM64 server boxes to build stuff on, and nobody cares about that old i386 nonsense anymore. I mean, you're right. It, this is a slightly in the future, but not very far. Well, I... I <laughs> 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 Let's talk about how long it takes to bootstrap ARM64 right now and how crazy it would be to actually want to cross-build from ARM64 to anything else. It's possible that in the future, ARM64 hardware is, is actually going to be comparable to, to something else for uh, as, as a, a compiler host, but yeah. that's far enough in the future that I, well, that, li that line is clearly It's not today, high no, in the but sky. You know, <laughs> um, next year, that will be quite... That remains to be seen. So... Sorry? <laughs> Remains to be what? He just compared you to our time. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, I would like Debian uh, just to start on, on, on a very small subset, and this small subset should be maybe just AMD64 uh, for the host, or maybe AMD64 and i386. Um, because we know that all stuff all works. Is, is Right, and, and, and if, if somebody wants to extend that later, mm -hmm. that's, that's not a problem. But so um, We have got some stats from the Endebian downloads to find out which compilers people actually downloaded. And yeah. you're right, the overwhelming so majority are uh, AMD64 to uh, ARM something. But, so uh, it is true that I do want to like the uh, um, native tools, tool chain ha um, have built from, from separate sources than the cross tool chains. What I do see in, uh, in Ubuntu for well all our four supported cross root chains, uh, it, it's just extra work to um, upload binutas four times, upload GCC cross four times, and things like that. Um, so maybe um, it's worth thinking about uh, to build all cross com compilers uh, targeting uh, complete Debian architectures in one source package, so that maybe r may save some time. So you've got a source package that builds all the AMD64 to something yes. compilers, yeah, yeah. Um, like the binu tools. So yeah, so the question, the trade-off there is, is having a separate source so that at least that part works and you can upload it, versus uh, yeah, as you say, having a lot of repetition and rebuilding rather pointlessly. Um, if we just use what we already have, then they're separate. Um, So one of the things that's quite interesting is um, uh, something Helmut's been talking about this week, which uh, solves the GHC problem, or AGS, is to be able to install both i386 and AMD64 uh, native compilers on the same system, because they'll both run. Um, and we sat there and worked out that that's perfectly doable and actually doesn't conflict with the way the cross-compilers work. In fact, it makes it all a bit more orthogonal. I actually quite like that idea. Um, what so. Does it do for the so um, we'll get to that later on. There's a whole load of stuff. So, but um, if we get that far, it yeah. Uh, so from your point of view, you still install GCC 4.7, right? But actually, <coughs> the the packaging behind the scenes changes a bit. Um, so one of the things that came out of the Raspbian discussion this morning from the Raspbian people, they said the one thing we'd really like you to change was if there was one place to change the compiler defaults. 
because otherwise there's an awful lot of source packages where they have to change the runes. Um, but I don't think GCC makes that easy, does it? There isn't a place. Is there, could we do that? Is it? My impression was that, that the Raspbian people did want to have um, a package where they could specify different um, target defaults for mm -hmm. compilers. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't match quite uh, what, what you did write in the, in the wiki. Um, okay. So, uh, well, for GCC, we do have only default packages. Well, that's GCC. That's which, that's which GCC gets run. But their point is they need to set the default build options for right. ARMv6 instead of ARMv7 uh, and, then, and then rebuild everything. And they don't uh, want to have to edit isn't that eight package source packages. Plan? Well, I wondered that. Will that work? It should if everybody's doing their packages correctly. It should be a dpackage build flags thing where so you want to does set. Does well, well, so, so right. So if, if the point is you want the compiler's behavior out of the box to use whichever flags you're talking about with when it's used outside of a package. It's, it's, no, it's, it's 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 when you build the compiler. So yes, you rebuild. Right, right. So, so they, accept, they accept rebuilding the compiler set. They just don't want to have to edit lots of sources to do that. Okay. So anyway, um, if if we think we could do that, it will be very helpful to them. So, uh, well, I guess in the uh, case of, of Raspbian, in the case of Raspbian, do they actually care about um, <laughs> what are they configuring in the compiler that's different than the way we're configuring it, other than setting the default target? The compiler itself would need to be built to not use V7 instructions, otherwise you can't run it on Raspbian. Everyone get that? So yes, the compiler has to be built for V6 as well as all the stuff it builds. Um, so anyway, um, we should have a look at that. It will be nice. Um, yeah, so these various ways of building compilers. So there's, there's a bit of a tension between multi-lib and multi-arch stuff. You know, there's a lot of things you can do one way or the other. Uh, where you you can either put things in multi-lib locations and use that, or you can put things in multi-arch locations and use that. At the moment, the GCC packaging supports both of these, and it's quite complicated. Now, on the other hand, one hand, it's already been done, so we might as well leave it there. Um, so, and x86 people expect to be able to do dash m32 on their AMD64 compiler and get i386 stuff, and we can't change that because it's in probably in millions of build scripts everywhere. Um, I would prefer a world where people didn't expect their ARM HF compiler to also do ARM EL stuff and have all the bits installed without them installing an ARM EL cross compiler. But um, again, uh, Docker thinks that's useful, and I suspect other people do too. So I, I have encountered some packages that appear to think that this was something that you could do. So, so well the question is, do we want? Do we think we should support that? Do we think we should just tell people to install both compilers? Well, as long as uh, upstream supports these options, minus M32, minus M64, uh, and hard codes them in, 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 in packages, I think Debian should support these. So that gets used on ARM as well? I well, mean, it's, it's certainly used on i386 a lot, I agree. Uh, we don't think we can take that away. But are people so doing that on ARM already? Can, so we, can we stop them doing that? Tell them it's a bad plan? So. Uh, Debian doesn't have multi-libs for ARM enabled. Uh, I did enable these uh, for Ubuntu right. to have um, soft float and hard float mm. uh, multi-lib options. Because uh, when we did switch over from ARMEL to ARMHF, uh, it did make sense to, to run um, these um, binaries on, on the very same system. And um, yeah, well, at some time we may drop them, but... Um, okay, so I mean, I prefer to keep it disabled and wait for people to bitch a lot. Um, well, we it's we a bit of complexity we could remove, hopefully. We I will see these for ARM64 again. Yeah, true. And we will see <laughs> them for Big Engine and Little Engine, uh, ARM64 yeah. again. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're probably right. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, what else is there? Uh, so one of the other things about all this stuff, the way all the multi-arch stuff works, it's very good for doing distro cross-building, um, but because of the, the version, you can only install the... Uh, host architecture version of the library the same as the build architecture version. Um, and so if you wanted to build the very latest version for your uh, uh, target, then 
uh, that's harder because it'll tell you you can't install the standard system library. You need to stick it in a sysroot or something. So this works beautifully for distro building. You get great consistency. Multi-arch all just works as long as everything's built to the same versions. Uh, it's less useful to for doing random upstream development. And I don't know to what degree people uh, find Debian with multi-arch a bit of a pain in this regard. I never do that, so I don't care. But um, we may find that doing this everywhere actually makes upstream development using your cross tools more painful rather than less. Um, I don't know if anyone's run into trouble trying to use this. I guess not if you're all Debian users and we haven't enabled it yet. <laughs> so uh, Right, yeah, so there has been some grumbling from upstream, we're told by Ben. Um, I get we've done it, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, in in principle, you can use sysroots and stuff still, and that should work. Um, it's something we should check out. Um, there's a Debian cross mailing list um, just about to be created. Whenever the mailing list masters get round to it, I think it's agreed and generally considered useful. It's, it's been noticeable. It wasn't really one place to discuss all this cross stuff over the last couple of years. There were where the right people hung out. So if you're interested in this, uh, when the Debian cross mail lists appear, I guess we'll mail Debian to Vel and you should sign up. Uh, is that my phone? I feel obligated to mount a quick defense of multi-arch here. I'll be brief. Um, so yeah, multi-arch doesn't solve all the problems, but it does solve the problem of if you are targeting a distribution that you are running, um, it's it lets you do things very effectively. and. If you're targeting something that's not what you're running, you need to use a Trut, but you previously needed to use a Trut or something else anyway, so it doesn't make the problem invisible, but it also doesn't make it harder than it was. Right, so but you may need to use a Trut and build it for both architectures, so it can be slightly harder. If you need to install the build architecture version as well, because it's something part of the system, then you have to have a matching version of the build architecture library and the host architecture library. Otherwise, multi-arch tells you you can't install it. Well, only if it's something you need to install for the so I mean, for so the build architecture in the first place. Yes. So, yes, there's a little bit of it. There are a few corner cases where it gets a little bit fiddly, but for the most part, it's you're it's right. not making things harder than it was Indeed. before for whatever you're and you cross compiling. Be able to get and if you're targeting something that's not not Debian to begin with, you should just use sysroot and you shouldn't be trying to use multi arch for it. Indeed. So you should get all the system stuff exactly matching by default, and you can specifically, explicitly say, "And this extra bit from here." Um, so we're about to run out of time. Other things I should mention. Uh, there is this problem of specific build dependencies. So a number of packages depend on GCC specific version. Uh, and the problem is that when you cross build it, when it says I build depend on GCC 4.6, when you cross build it, you actually want to depend on GCC 4.6 triplet or triplet GCC. I can't remember which around it is. Um, and actually you might mean uh, I depend on both the build architecture version and a specific version and the uh, host architecture version and a specific version. So that's um, something we simply don't support right now. So we need a mechanism. Um, two things have been suggested. Uh, we can either, there aren't very many packages which do this. Mostly GCC bin utils um, are the things that get depended on. So there's a few dependencies which basically have to be translated to a different package when you're cross building. Um, and we could have some, so Colin suggested a scheme, I probably got the names all wrong, but the idea that there's, there's a field in the package that says this package is a translatable package name and you should translate it when cross-building. So that we just mark the set of packages which have this feature uh, and then uh, something, apt, dpackage, whatever, would pick the right one. Or you could have a substvar, um, so you build depend on something dash substitutable bit. Because um, the problem is you, you can't just change it in the dependencies because it depends what you're building for. So it's, it's special in this regard. Um, if anyone has strong opinions about which of these two, we've got a whole minute to... Uh, Subspar as in build depends is a, is a significant departure from how we use those currently. That implies some sort of uh, post... Uh, so, some sort of post-processing of, of the source package not done at build time, and yes. that would be, it's, it's not a good fit. We mm -hmm. shouldn't do it that way. Okay. Mike? I just noticed uh, that um, the proposal to change the 
a native compiler to use multi arch uh, package names uh, would solve the issue with having to specify cross profile in the substars case as well. So you just say GCC dash version dash host GNU type and everything works in that case as well. But you don't know which host type you're depending on until you build it because it depends what you're building for. Yeah, you still need substars, but you uh, no longer need a profile. The target, the, the, the property yeah. you install, the target architecture is not a property of the source package that you're building. Yeah, you still need the substars. Sorry? Uh, you still need the variables, but you don't need the profiles in that case. Okay, yeah, well, he's so right. And okay. that's not organized, sir. All right. Um, and um, there is a way without substwars uh, if you um, use ridiculously long dependency strings and use the cross profile together with every architecture you can build <laughs> for. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> right, but it would uh, get around that problem in an ugly manner. Yeah, true. Uh, so, uh, well, the little item build depends on bin util dev or annoying. Um, turns out that actually all the things I found really want liberty dev, so we're, I'm supposed to split that out of thingy, and it, he hassles me on a regular basis because I haven't done it for months now. Um, so we'll fix that. Uh, and there was this uh, interesting proposal to rearrange the, uh, as referenced up further up the thing, about being able to install, I see it's, but basically install any set of architectures side by side. Uh, I have to stop, apparently. Um, sorry, I wasn't going to go into all the details, but all the details are listed here. Um, and we will put that on a wiki page. I think it's quite a good scheme. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry there's no time for questions. Um, please hassle me afterwards. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs>